Hello everybody, welcome back to the Virtual World series. In this tutorial series, we're going to be setting up version control, which is going to be Git, and we're going to be using GitLab for the remote hosting, but we're also going to be setting up our work environment in general. So first we're going to want to grab this beautiful piece of software right here. So this is called CMDR. So this is basically a console emulator. And when you install it, you also get Git installed on Windows. You could also install Git Bash, but I'm going to use CMDR because it's it's just nicer to work with. So you can go ahead and get that at cmdr.net. The link will be in the description below. And if you scroll down, you can see this download full. And you can see right here it says with Git for Windows. So you can go ahead and install that. I installed that uh, directly in the C drive. So C drive and then cmdr. And when you go ahead and run that, it'll look like this. So I've already CD'd into the GitLab folder that I've created here. And, uh, and I've actually created another folder in here for... Uh, specifically for the virtual world. So now we're going to go ahead and create our work directory, but first you're going to want to download VS Code. So you can download that right here. And uh, this is going to be what we're going to be using for editing our code and stuff like that. It's just a, a nice little work environment, uh, nice for working with a work environment. So you can go ahead and download that, and we'll, we'll get into that more in the next tutorial though. For now we're going to focus on Git. Okay. So now that we have CMDR set up, we just need to set up our remote repository. So we're going to use GitLab. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to set up a group. Now the reason for this is we're going to have multiple repositories for the virtual world. And the reason for that is we want to keep things organized. And we don't want to throw everything into one repository. So for example, we're going to have the client in one repository, the server in another, and the mini games are probably going to have their own repositories. And <clears throat> that helps keep things organized if we want to work on something uh, we don't have to dig through a repo and basically creating a group we can consolidate that all in one area first we'll specify the group path i just set it to specter virtual world and i'm just going to name it specter oh specter virtual world like that uh the description i'm just going to leave blank for now group avatar you can choose one if you want i'm not going to right now and the visibility level though this is going to be uh, something that you're going to want to do depending on how you want to manage your project. If you want it to be open source, you can leave it public or internal. I'm just going to leave mine private for now. So when you've created a group, we can now create projects or repositories under that group. So we can go ahead and create a project now. And I'm just going to call this VW Client. And a short description I'm just going to put here, uh, Client for the Virtual World. Oh, oh. That's not what I wanted to do. Virtual world. Okay. And again, we're going to leave this private. Uh, and that's going to be set basically to your group settings. So if your group is set to private, you can't set it to internal or public. So we can go ahead and create a project. So now that we have this set up, we're going to go back into CMDR and we're going to set up Git. So first, the first thing we're going to want to do is configure Git because we want it to use the username that we have and the email that we have for GitLab. So we can do that by using the git config command and we're gonna set it to global and we're gonna set the user.name value to your name on, uh, on GitLab and it'll actually give that to you right here. And we're also going to set up our email, user.email and you can type in your email there. Okay, perfect we can go ahead and clone our repository and again this little helpful startup page will give us the link directly to the repo so we can just paste that in there and uh, so it says you appear to have cloned an empty repository that's okay so we now can CD into that em uh, into that directory and as you can see it's empty there's nothing in there right so the first thing we're gonna create is just an, a readme uh, so I'm just going to put that to readme.md. Touching it just basically creates an empty file. And we're going to want to add a few other files. So here is VW Client in the Explorer. You can see there's a hidden folder there called .git, and this manages all of the repository stuff. So yeah, so now that we've got that, I'm going to go ahead and add a personal file that I've created here. And this is basically a... So you remember in the last video where I went over the packets, this is basically a markdown file that contains 
documentation on the packets. You remember in the last video I said that we want to write these things down that way if we need to use them in the future, which we definitely will because we need to add server handlers and handlers to the client. So it's useful to write all this information down so that we can reference it later. So that's what this is. A uh, link to this will also be in the description down below. And uh, any other markdown files that we add, we're also going to want to have here. But I'm going to keep it organized. I'm going to put this... Actually, no, I'll, I'll just keep it in the main directory for now. So the readme, you can go ahead and edit that to whatever you want. Uh, I'm just going to leave it blank for now. I'll fill that in after the video. But generally in the readme, you just want some general information about the project. So we have the basic repository set up. There's not much in it right now. We're going to add more to that in the next video. So now I'm just going to show you how to commit and push this to the main branch. So what we're going to do right here is we're going to get add dot. So the dot operator basically says add everything that is in the folder. So everything in the directory, just add it all and we're going to commit it. So if we just wanted to add one specific thing, we could do get add readme.md. So now we're going to want to go ahead and create a commit. So we can do that by running the git commit command and we can use the dash m parameter to basically specify a message. So that's going to be the title of the commit. So I'm just going to set it to initial commit. And so yeah, now we've created a commit. So now we just want to go ahead and push that commit to the master remotely. So we can use that using the git push command. So breaking this down a little bit, um, push basically means putting it onto the main server and pull is for updating your local version. And you can see earlier we used clones. So the main three are clone, pull, pull and push. Origin just basically says it's coming from our our local files, and master just says that it's going to the server, so we can just go ahead and run that command. So if we go back to our main repo on GitLab, you can see that it has our readme and our packets.md, which is really nice. So in the next tutorial, we're going to add code to this for our client. We're going to start setting up our website. So we'll open up VS Code, we'll start writing stuff in there, and uh, and we'll also commit that to the main repository. So Git, if you haven't used it before, might be a bit of a learning curve, but as we go through the series, we're gonna be using it a lot, so you'll learn how to use it if you haven't used it before. And it just helps us maintain um, versions. And where that's really helpful is, let's say we made a code change that completely broke everything, right? And we didn't have a backup of local files. So we added this code that broke things and we don't know how to fix it we can roll that back. So using Git, we can go to a previous version that did work and restore that if needed. And that's one, this one really helpful thing of version control. It also is good for collaboration if you're working with other people. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like below. Comment any questions or comments you guys may have on the video and subscribe. And in the next video, we're going to be talking about uh, setting up the website and I will see you guys there.